I learned my first lessons in dishwashing from my mother. I would always, you know, leave the big casseroles and pots and pans and then say I'm finished with the dishes and she'd say no, dishes aren't finished until everything in the kitchen is washed, the counters are wiped. One important tip she always said is never leave food in the sink. So always clean the sink and dry the sink. I've been dishwashing since I was a child. I was the youngest of four kids. So when I was younger, they would always say, oh, the youngest has to wash the dishes. Uh, so when I was a kid, I used to not like it because I was forced to do it because of my age. But as I got older, I began to love it. Um, from age 13 to around age 20, worked in restaurants, uh, washing dishes. And I found that the um, dishwashers were often the people that could be themselves. Too. And not only to dishwashing, but everything, you know, finding work that people don't like and learning to love it. Uh, I heard a good quote yesterday that the sweeper can sweep better than most kings can be kings. So it's not what you're doing, it's how you're doing it. Really being present and giving all your attention and energy to what you're doing. So that's, that's my views on dishwashing. I think it's a very valuable skill in life and very useful. Uh, it's something, you know, your spouse and your, whoever you're sharing a space with really appreciates dishwashing. So yeah, when you're dishwashing, you know, just like anything, it's a, a form of concentration or meditation where, you know, you can be dishwashing and thinking that you're still in the, the room with other people or, you know, at your presentation the next day or anywhere. But really, to get into dishwashing, you have to be in the present moment and think, you know, scrubbing, 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 rinsing, rinsing, and really looking at what you're doing and feeling the texture to see if anything's dried here. And really, when you get in that zone, it becomes a form of meditation that's really, really relaxing, like a yoga or tai chi, moving and aligning your actions with your thoughts and your breath. Another thing which I learned is never leave things just flat because then the water gets stuck and it condenses. Or never leave things up because then the water sticks in here and then you have dirty water the next time you want to use it. Always leave a gap to where there's space in between and always have it face down so it can properly dry and, and clean. And also there's a technique with different um, bins, which I learned in Thailand where there's three bins and you put the dirty dishes in the first one, and then soap in the second one, and then clean water in the third one and, and rinse it out. And that ends up saving you a lot of water. Um, and if you're in a place with a lot of sand, sand is also a great tool for um, you know, soaking up all the, the oil and grease and uh, cleaning that first layer of filth off the dish. Many people in the desert use sand as their main uh, source for cleaning their dishes. So there's a lot of natural things that also go into dishwashing which uh, oftentimes are overlooked. Good. So, yeah, I guess the reason for using organic soap is so you can reuse the water. So ideally this water would run off into the garden or run off into a space where the water can also serve as um, water for plants or for trees. So that's why if you have chemicals, it's not good for the plants or trees. Um, so that's the main reason for wanting to use uh, chemical free soap. Uh, and the last dish is always such a relief because you started with all these dishes and then at the end, when you get to the last dish, you can feel, and you can see the progress that you made. And then this is the best part, which is often overlooked, is the cleaning of the sink. Uh, 